Dave, it'd be really great just, I think, by way of kicking us off into this, for you um, just, to, just to share with us what, what's on your heart right now for, for, for church leaders. Obviously, you're in contact with church leaders um, all day, every day. You're, you're hearing from them. Um, but in your kind of just your own moments of thinking where we are right now, what we're walking through, where we're going, what's on your heart right now and on your radar for, for church leaders I think one of the first things to say, I have been really, really, it's like if we've given 12 months notice for this to happen, we'd have been ready for it, maybe. And um, some, but with no notice of it, it suddenly happened. And uh, the way you've all got your churches sorted out and, you know, the number of things I'm hearing, I think, I think you've, you've done really, really well. So but our, our reaction has been very, 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 very good. Um, Obviously, a reaction is what happens immediately. A response is when you've got a chance to think about it. And I think we're in response time now. We've gone from reaction to response. And and because um, suddenly it was, a, it was like a, the field was suddenly flat. Because whether you've got 500 people or 50 people in your church, unless you'd already been doing online stuff, this was all new. And the, the first weekend, there was a mad scramble for people running into church and grabbing a camera and taking it home and doing everything. And you, and you found out that actually some small churches were really good at this. I mean, you only really need one person in your church who knows what he's doing. And your church can look as good as Joel Austin almost because they can make you look good. And, and you can be a big church and, and have somebody who's not very good. And so that that's it's given us, as we have to look and see who are the gifted people. We might have to look at different people in our leadership teams going forward if this is going to be uh, something which stays with us. Because I th one of the things, Carl, I think the phrase that I picked up was almost some churches have taken church online and others are now doing online church. So I think the initial thing was just to take your church online and do your sermon and do some worship. And, and it's almost like um, doing church online without being in the church. And I think that works for a while, but online church is different to taking your church on. If it's an advantage is that um, I, I I watch a lot of services, so I'm not actually doing them. And uh, so I'm like the people in your church. And I've got to tell you, often the churches are on YouTube and you go in there. If you watch, there's, there's comments down the side, everyone's talking. They're not talking about the seven. They're really not. They're, what you do, there's an, hi, George. Hi, Fred. How are you? Nice to see you all. Oh, lovely being with the family. And I realised just how much chatter goes on in an average service. I bet they're usually whispering that to each other. But we're suddenly, we're getting an insight into how much, how little they're actually focused on what's happening at the front. So I, th I think we're, <laughs> the day it's let me see what really happens. And we have to realise that we, we have that. And people really miss the community. People really miss talking to one another so somehow in our online presence just sticking out something that we just don't have a response misses because that i think great that people are, are speaking like that and i think too but not too long i think i think uh, i think everybody knows the fact you might have a thousand people list registered on what you're doing might doesn't mean they were all there for the whole service um if you watch people's TV habits nowadays, the binge on things, you know, you might watch Netflix and as soon as you finish something, it comes up, you want to watch another one. Well, if you're on YouTube, it comes up and says, you want to watch it, you go to another church one. So they're probably watching other people's churches. And if it's in the latter house, um, um, you can wander off and have a cup of tea halfway through. You know what I mean? You can, and the people who watch you on Sunday will probably listen all the way through to the sermon. People who watch on Monday will be fast forwarding any bits you're not very good at. And, uh, and so it's, it's a different world. And if you're going to do 40 minute sermons, I don't think they'll be listening to them. I think you're going to have to get sort of a shorter than that and get sort of uh, things that work. Um, if you're going to reach out, and I think I'll, I'll stop after this because in, in our breakfast, we were doing something last year. We, I think it was Kerry New had talked about how the foyer has moved and how the, the first introduction people have to your church isn't when they come to church anymore. It's, it's how they saw you online and how they, how they read, read about you. Um, 
and that's very much so because this this there will be a season we will start meeting again. I don't think it'll be for quite a good few months. It's not when Cambridge University have just said today that they're not going to have any more lectures until summer 2021. You realise that other people are seeing that's that's we're not going to be that far away, but it's going to realise it's not going to be next week before the government are going to allow us. Smaller churches, you might get meeting quicker than bigger churches, you know, if they say under 50. But we'll, back, we'll come back to that in a minute, I'm sure, but you know, how easy is it for you to have 50 people social distanced in your church when you've got one toilet? I mean, all those things, it won't come down to the size of halls, so it'll come down to what, where's the pinch points you get people through, the number of toilets you have, and, and car parkings, and, and all those sort of things. So, was that enough of a ramble, really, Carl? Because that was a yeah. little bit of lots of things to think about. Yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the things I was going to ask you really was to unpack your, you, um, you sent an email out to the region a couple of days ago about right. being church online and what does that look like? And you've, you've unpacked that a little bit more, which is great. Let, let me ask you then, just in response to that, um, I, so I'm, I'm a church leader, um, you know, pastoring church here in Letchworth, as many of us are around the Met region. What, what from your perspective, what would be some of the helpful things for me to be focusing on in this season so we 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 we, we're obviously looking forward to the day when we can meet again physically it's not yet we don't know when that's going to be but from your perspective would there be some things that i could begin to plan for think about uh, in preparation for that day when we do come back together again i i think i think a couple of things one one thing even when we look um to the future is 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 realizing who 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 asks what are the audience that you're actually looking at? Um, a lot of churches, it feels to me as if you're mainly talking to your own people. Um, but we are living in a society which is desperate looking for answers. And all those new contacts you're getting are people, they're not just Christians, they're people who want to have the answer. We, we must up the evangelistic input of, our, of what we're sending out because... Uh, people are desperate to find those things. So don't be afraid to put the gospel out there. That's a big thing. Second thing I think I'd love to see looking into the future is um, there will be big, big public celebrations when everyone's allowed to get together. And I wonder if you get any links with the council or whether there will be official things done. And I'm not sure how fast they are at thinking about these things, but to, to talk to the mayor and to talk to the councillors and say, are you going to do a big civil thing? We'd like to suggest that we do our town, our borough, there's a, a thanks service, a thanksgiving service where we can pray and thank God for it. Uh, before, because before this, people were getting sacked for wearing a cross working British Airways. But then when the prime minister's in hospital, they've been asked, please pray for the prime minister. There's a change at the moment and we could take advantage of that. So I've been looking to sort of saying, think about way far, far away about how you're going to do that. In between times, you're going to have to ask, when we start meeting together, it's going to have to be, you know those people in your church who drive you crazy about details? You're going to have to get them on board now to help you think through how, how we'll set up. They're the, the engineers and the, and the administrators um, you need to start talking to them and, and pulling them into your thinking and about because it comes easy to them to think about how to organize and to get ready. So there's bound to be people like that in your church. Usually they drive you crazy, but this time they might save you a lot of hassle. Yeah, that's, re that's really helpful. Um, Dave, we, we keep, you keep dropping in and out a little bit, but I want to ask you one, one last question. Um, the... In, in this season, there's been much made about the fact that there's on one hand, there's a challenge, but on the other hand, there's also that great opportunity. And you, you touched on it a little bit there. How, how was we as, as pastors, as church leaders, um, how, how do we begin to, I guess, continue to respond to both the challenge and the opportunity? Because on, 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 in one meeting, we could be, or one pastoral appointment, we could be sat with people that are in a place of grieving, but then on the other, a few minutes later or a couple of hours later, we could be sat with people where actually we're trying to energize them around the renewed mission that we're in right now and the, and the real opportunity to journey with people. Just speak into that for a few moments about both the challenge and the opportunity that's there for us as leaders. Yeah, my, my connection seems to be softened a little bit, but I, I, think, I think this, 
everything we do is a challenge and an opportunity. That's not different. Um, a, a normal service is a challenge and an opportunity. But it's just our, we, 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 when, when you have a congregation that's in front of you every week, you, you tend to know what you think you know what the challenges are. What we, what we need to learn is what the challenges are in front of us. And, and, and as much information as you can get about who your audience is. And I, th I think we have to learn not just multitasking, but we have to learn how to present in such a way that but you stay away from the language of Zion. You stay away from in jokes. You stay away from things which, which uh, only half the church get the joke about. And you have to start thinking, who is listening to this? And, 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 and that's part of the challenge is actually not, when you're not sure about things, you, you, you can retreat back into what is safe and secure. And you can talk about the old stories and talk about things, but the people who are watching for the first time, they do not know any of those old stories. And all you're doing is disorientating them. You're just making them feel excluded so they don't understand it. So I, I, I think uh, a, a challenge is to stay current, a challenge is to stay relevant to everybody else and then to not become insular and to become, to keep your arms wide open, to, to be welcoming as many people as possible in a way in how you speak and what you say. That's great, brilliant. Thanks, Dave. Before um, before I bring Mark in, is it is it just anything, you know, obviously we've got 95, probably nearly 100 leaders that are on this Zoom call. Is, is there just one thing that you want to just say to them as regional leader right now that just where, where we are in just the next sort of minute before I bring Mark in? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, I have to start to say that. How I, I, th I think I've been really impressed the way you've all done, well done. I think you're finding actually uh, your people, they, they, they want to be in touch with you. They want to see you. The Zoom groups are working really well. Lots of churches are doing cell groups and midweek groups and, and their dependence is up. Prayer meetings are bigger on Zoom than they were in, in Latin. There's something to learn about that. In London, uh, in our area, people leave the house really early in the morning and they go out and they're getting home at seven, eight o'clock and we ask them to come out again. Whereas if you say, come on, Zoom for an hour, then the travel time's out. And, then, and I think there may be a lesson to learn there that, that actually it, it, it works better for people who don't have to do that. Other people actually need to meet. Some people actually need to meet. If you're a bit of an introvert, you're quite happy. Some pastors, quite honestly, are really enjoying isolation because we are introverts. I get charged up by being alone. Mandy gets charged up by being with people. And so uh, this is driving her crazy. She's climbing the walls, but I'm all right. You know, I'm, I miss you all. I do miss you all, but I, I can cope. And, and your church is full of people like that too. There's some people who they'll be all right, you know, for another few months if they don't get to meet face to face. There's others who will find any reason to break the rules because they're desperate to see people. And so to realize we have to uh, uh, reach out to When Zoom failed, that's the other thing I mentioned. Um, don't get too tied up to one platform. Um, they're always, there's always going to be a problem. Zoom crashed on Sunday. A lot of churches just went offline, didn't have a plan B. And I find, um, I, I used to think in our church, I could operate everything. So when the PA system was all that money spent on it. They showed me how to do it. So if nobody turned up, I can run our. I could run our PA system until something went wrong, because anyone can operate it, but only someone who knows what they're doing can fix it. And so the fact that we can operate Zoom or whatever doesn't mean we're good enough to fix it. But something goes wrong, so we need to. It, it shows our weaknesses that we can we can we can switch it on, but we can't fix it. And we have to get Plan B. We have to get ready with in case something goes wrong. Very good. Thanks, Dave. And, and uh, there were some great headlines on the weekend where churches crash Zoom. Zoom. Yes. <laughs> and uh, churches all over all over the UK, trying to, or pretty much all over the world, trying to use Zoom and, uh, and it crashed. So uh, amazing. Dave, thanks so much for your, uh, for your input and just time there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Mark. Mark, if you would just unmute yourself. And um, I'm just really delighted that... Um, that Mark is um, able to come and just join us um, this morning and just give this time. Mark, thanks so much. And just always benefited from your, your input over, over the years and just really going to appreciate just the time now that you're going to give just to input into pastors and church leaders here in, in the Met regions. Um, I guess just one of the things I'd love to ask you straight off the bat really is 
as a church leader, as a, as a, as a pastor, what are the, some of the things that you are, that you are just thinking through right now with, with everything that's going on, being in the, in the same shoes as so many of us and trying to respond to this, get some traction through this, understand it, but also how to move forward. What, what are some of the things that you're just thinking through right now as a, as a church leader and as a pastor? Hey, it's great to be with you all. And uh, it's been great to connect with quite a number of you over the last few months as well, just as you've navigated this journey online. And it's been a real privilege just to share with some of you guys. Um, we feel like complete novices in this new landscape and are making lots of mistakes and getting some wins in there as well. Uh, and we've been using Zoom for three and a half years. We've been using online platforms for six and a half, seven years, and we still feel like novices. So for some of you, just step it into this. Um, just doing a phenomenal job. It's incredible. Um, some of the things I, I, I feel like I'm, we talked about the tension of the opportunity and the challenge. And I feel in many ways that some of the biggest things I'm navigating is an inward, inward tension, really. Um, I feel that there is a, a call upon my life to, um, to, to find myself hidden in God and to allow him to do something fresh in me that this isn't just a reset in my diary and it has reset my diary i i've removed I, i've always been quite organized and i have templates all through my diary and i temporarily suspended those for the first few weeks and then i just thought i need to get rid of them all i've just completely removed every template from my diary because whenever the new normal emerges um, my, I, I want to look at it with fresh eyes, really, and consider my priorities again. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things around that that I've had to reset on. And I, I haven't found yet, if I'm honest, what I sense God's wanting to do in me. I, I feel really close to the Lord. Um, I've never been praying more than I am now. I've never been more in the word of God than I am now. Um, I'm loving the presence of God. I'm loving the opportunity to minister into people's living rooms. Um, I, I sometimes think that the most amnesia set journey is the journey that people take from our church buildings to their homes on a Sunday. One minute they stood there lifting their hands, declaring he is Lord and I'm giving everything to you and I trust you with all my heart. And by the time they get home, um, it's just back to what was before they came to church in the beginning, which isn't maybe a true reflection of the Lordship of Christ. And to be able to take that into people's homes, I'm loving the opportunity for that. And we really feel there's a bit of a holiness drive going on right now. Um, we have decided very early on that we're going to take communion a lot more regularly than we used to. Now it's in people's homes. Um, so we do that on a very regular basis. It's something that's engaging it's interactive and we do together we share it together and it centers us around the cross um and we're loving doing that um to see couples doing that and families doing that it's just been really precious um and and i think there's something i've i'm i've been really busy the last two months and i've probably overdone it a little bit um, I, I've faced all the frustrations that you're facing. In fact, this morning, I just sent an apology to some of my team because um, we had a review meeting yesterday of some issues that we're looking at with our online stuff. And I just got a bit negative. Um, I saw the stats, um, which don't tell us anything about what's going on in people's hearts. And I, and I just reflected before the Lord this morning. I thought I was a bit negative yesterday. The team didn't need that. And I just, I just wrote to them all this morning. I said, I'm really sorry, guys. Um, you, needed, you needed me to, be, to, to not have that. That was some frustrations in my heart that came out, and I'm really sorry. Um, so we carry all those tensions, all those inner things. Uh, I, but yesterday, um, my wife tried to start her car after about a week of inactivity, and it, the battery was flat. Um, I understand that's a bit of a national epidemic at the moment, flat batteries in cars. And uh, it was fine. We live on a hill. I just jump started it. And I sat in there for about 20 minutes while the engine ran just to try and charge the battery back up. And I was a little bit miffed, to be honest, to, to sit in the car for 20 minutes when I had a big to-do list. And, and I was just reminded that at the end of this, I hope when the church emerges from what's the next step in this, that we haven't got a flat battery. Um, that, that that will be a disaster that, that, that society needs a church that's charging right now and 
building its battery like never before. And we're going to have to be ready to go um, with more levels of faith than we've ever had, with greater passion for Jesus than we've ever had, with a richer sense of God's word dwelling in us richly than we've ever had before. People of presence, people of prophetic nature to speak into some of the massive needs in our society. Um, you know, we can't just come around and, and comfort those who've lost jobs. I, I think, you know, there's a whole prophetic stuff about job creation. There's a whole bunch of stuff about speaking into governmental levels in our society with the prophetic voice of the Lord. And the church needs to be filled right now. And I think one of the questions we've been asking our congregation, are you hiding or are you hidden? Uh, and I think that sense of um, for so, so long, you know what sin does? It, it gets us like Adam and Eve to hide um, from the Lord. And, and I think there's, you know, a lot of our churches who've been wrestling with issues of sin and, and living, uh, dancing to the tune of false gods, whether that's materialism, whatever philosophy that is that, that has become part of the narrative of their life. And um, it's caused them to not be able to approach God with confidence. So they've hidden. Um, and we, you know, we're pretty good in church at putting masks on people and putting masks on ourselves. So being able to get away with that. But I think there's a new authenticity has to emerge from this. And to do that, we need to be laying down every false idol, every false God, and come into a place of surrender and submission. And I, and I think the fact that I feel pretty clueless right now um, is probably part of God's strategy to get me on my face and say, I was reading James this morning, if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. Um, I was struck by the next verses, actually. Let me just, let me just get that on my notes, because it really, it, it, it really impacted me this morning, because sometimes I quote that first part, ask the Lord who gives generously, and I, and I miss the next part. Um, this is James 1, 5 to 6. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. I'm so glad about that. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave on the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. And, you know, we quote that, ask God, he gives generously for those who ask for wisdom, but we have to be single-minded. And, and I feel right now that the searching of the Spirit on my own life is to say, Mark, you've got to be single-minded. This has to be everything. This is... This is all in right now. It can't just be an extravagant hobby. It has to be your passion and your life. So a little bit of meander in there, Carl. But, um, no, that's no, good. I, I feel I've got more questions than answers, but I, that probably is a bit of a summary of some of the things I'm stirring with at the moment. Hey, Mark, I'm just, I'm just looking at some of the comments that are coming in on the, on the chat there, and just people are really appreciating your, your honesty uh, and your openness about some of those things, because I, I imagine a lot of us have felt felt similar things and and been in, in and identify with what you've shared. Uh, I want to ask you another question in a moment about sort of the the tension between gathering physically online. I'm sorry, gathering online and then coming back to gathering physically. But bef before I go there, um, let me just remind you: if you want to um, ask a question, in a few moments we're going to get Dave back on and we're going to have Mark as well just to answer any questions you've got. So please do use the chat there just to um, um, put those questions out there. And we're going to try and spend about 20 minutes just answering some of those. They can be super practical questions to, to anything else. Um, we'd love just to hear them and then we're going to gather them together in just in just a few moments. But, but Mark, before we get there, um, um, could, could I just um, touch on something you, you said there about obviously that sense of um, a flat battery and and you know that that um illustration you used about the battery I, I think when when we're feeling as leaders down if we're feeling a bit sort of all over the place a bit beaten up maybe um and a bit out of sorts in this current season often it can feel quite daunting when we talk about the opportunity and reaching people um, what would what would you just say by way of encouragement to anybody who's listening right now, where they, they identify with what you said about perhaps feeling down a bit, a bit of a flat battery, but but actually are just feeling a little bit daunted by what is ahead? What would, what would you just say by way of encouragement to them right now? Uh, it's probably a really healthy realization to be at that, you know, we're coming up to Pentecost and Jesus told the disciples, don't do anything until you're empowered from heaven don't don't run ahead of me you know and they had brilliant teaching they had brilliant mentoring they had brilliant insights brilliant coaching but he said don't do anything until you receive the holy spirit and 
you know, I, I think in the old model, we've been able to do some stuff without the Holy Spirit. We've learned, we've learned some techniques, same as the disciples. They've learned some techniques of Jesus. They'd seen some stuff. They'd learned some methodology. And we've learned a lot of methodology to be able to do church without the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's face it. Let's be honest about it. You know, sometimes our greatest level of expectation is whether people experience a tingle down the spine during a sung worship experience. And, you know, God is wild and extravagant and powerful and awesome. And, and there's a dissidence between our expectation and, and the reality, I, I think, of who he is. Um, so we need to be empowered. And, you know, I actually, I, I'm, I'm full of vision right now. I, I, I'm, I'm finding things are happening at a pace that would have taken years. So, you know, when the lockdown started, I began to reach out to leaders across the Southwest from all denominations and invited them on Easter Sunday to do a joint prayer initiative across the Southwest. I think I had four bishops involved. I had uh, all sorts of leaders involved. We had about 24 leaders from across the Southwest. We had 3,000 people join us online for a prayer meeting on Easter Sunday. We've got another one on Pentecost Sunday. And, you know, we're aiming for 5,000 plus people to join us in that prayer initiative. And the, the unity of the momentum is beautiful and it's growing. Um, but I, I can't, we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit empowering us. And I was reminded as I sat in the car with the engine running yesterday of that beautiful verse in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Um, and uh, I thought, God, I, I need, uh, uh, the, the nations do not need a church that's just limping along with just enough charge to get through the day. You know, sometimes in our, in, in our lives, our phones, if my phone begins to go below 10% battery, I begin to look for plug sockets. Um, and there are sometimes you do those, um, those make do top ups where you just plug it in. Um, when you're in a half an hour meeting and then it goes up to 25%, 30%, and then you limp along to the next plug socket. And I think the church has been there for a long time. And I know I'm generalizing, but there's an abundance. God wants us to be full. And, and I think that for, for me, like, you know, thank God for the online stuff. Like if this had happened five years ago, we'd be stuffed right now in terms of some of our connection points with people. Um, thank God that we're in a place where our older generation have got some form of tablets um, and the uh, ability to have broadband in their homes. That wouldn't have been possible five years ago. So in terms of timing, this is our Roman road moment. You know, those of us when we did our New Testament surveys, this is the Roman road moment um, in the nations um, that the internet has become that new Roman road. But to be honest, if, if all this is about just getting the church online, um, I think we've missed something. You know, that can't be the biggest gig in town about getting the church online. And um, we, I, I've just produced a video that's going out to our church today. And, and I congratulate them on their flexibility on the how we do church. But I, then in the video I say, but I don't really want to talk about the how today. I want to remind us of the why. And, and I think as the church, we need probably more than ever as leaders to be really clear about our why we do church. And we need to communicate that really clearly to our, to our churches, our congregations, our leaders. This is why we do this, guys. The how will always change. So what? It's online now. So what? It's not in a building. Okay, it will, you know, there will always be flexibility around that. If persecution comes on a nation, we have to change how we do it. That's not the big deal. The big deal is why. And the, and the nation needs the church to be really clear about his why. Because I, I believe from the scriptures, we're, we're called to be part of the head, not the tail in society. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always struck. I think it was it, um, Ed Silvoso a number of years ago mentioned that there was a time in Argentina when they had a major recession and their national airline was about to go under. And I don't remember all the detail of the story, but I remember him saying that one of the leaders felt it had a prophetic word for the company. And he went and addressed all the staff and said, if you will all take, uh, I think it was something like a 15% pay cut. If you will all agree to this, the company will be saved. And the staff all agreed to it. And the company was saved. The airline was saved. 
And why can't the church begin to have that voice? You know, thank God for us working out how we get guitars playing through Zoom and all that sort of stuff. You know, well done. That's great. But come on, what about the prophetic voice of the Lord speaking into our nation right now? And, and I believe this is a time for us to fill our batteries, wait upon the spirit of the Lord. And incidentally, you know, when I, we read that those are wait upon the Lord, I was reminded of um, a number of years ago, being in a restaurant and seeing a waiter working the tables brilliantly. He was attentive. He was listening to every requirement of the, of the customers. He was um, courteous. He was working really hard. I could see him running behind the scenes to deliver and to serve on the tables. And he was waiting upon the tables. And I, and I feel that that promise is as I wait upon the Lord, as I serve him well, as I'm attentive to him, I listen to his voice, he will renew my strength. And I will be able to run and not grow weary. I'll be able to walk and not faint. And in the, in the landscape that's about to hit us in the nation, we are gonna have to run and we're gonna have to know what it is to have the Holy Spirit cause us to not grow weary because there's some interesting days ahead, I believe. So good, Mark. And uh, I think um, some of that stuff around the, the why and the how, I mean, we, you could talk about that all day in terms of just how the, the why is what informs the how. There's just so much in, in that. Um, before we just go to a few questions, um, I wonder if you would just touch on for a few moments, because for, for you, it, um, obviously, it, when all this happened, there were so many churches that got in touch with you. You've, you've spoke about that already. And I think just on, on behalf, really, of the region, because there were so many of our churches that got in touch, we have just a huge thanks to you and your teams for all that you did just to give support, really, to lots of our churches and church leaders. Um, but, but let me ask you, because people will have one eye now on physical gatherings again. They'll be starting to think about what that could look like. Having done online church for a while and having gathered people physically and run those two, what are you sort of thinking for you and for your team? I mean, it might be too early. I, I don't know. I guess I just want to put the question out there in terms of what are you sort of thinking with both online and physical gathering mo moving forward? Would you be reverting back to what you did previously or are you even just thinking afresh around that right now? We're definitely thinking fresh. Um, so I look back and cringe a little bit at our online stuff in the past because now all of our audience is online. We know just how hard that concentration span level is. Um, the optimum length of time for an online church, research suggests is about 40 minutes. Most wow. of us preach sermons around that length before shutdown. Um, and that's the entire duration of a program. And when you think, you know, um, the dynamics of a screen are very different. If you're watching ITV and you get an ad break for two minutes, it feels like a long time. You go put the kettle, you make a cup of tea. Two minutes is a long time. You know, we spend that long doing our preamble about why we're gonna speak on the issue we're gonna speak on when we're preaching our Sunday services. So time is of more premium. And I don't think people are necessarily less able to concentrate in their home. I think they're just more honest. Um, I, I think um, they used to gla their eyes would glaze over previously and they would sit there like good listening congregation members, but actually their minds were wandering in lots of places. Um, and I don't think that's about the quality of, of our preaching style. You know, we need to try and be more engaging, but I just think there's some stuff around that that we're thinking through quite a lot. So we probably the longest preach we'll do now is about 18 minutes. Um, and we do that. We have two services on us. We have three services on a Sunday. Our first one, we trailer to be a little bit more Bible study. And our Bible study is about 18. Well, we allow 20 minutes in the program, but I time myself most weeks in about 18 minutes. Um, and that's the in-depth one at this moment in time. Um, the next service, we do about 10, 11 minutes preach. Uh, we just think beyond that. And, and I miss the opportunity to go deeper in the word of God. But we have lots of other opportunities to do that. We've got reading plans we're doing daily with the church. We've got devotions, half hour devotions we're doing every day. There's basically other channels and other ways of getting alongside people to help them delve deeper into the word of God. We've got an academy that's got all sorts of teaching and training resources that people engage with. Um, so what we're thinking of doing is almost thinking of our, of our church as um, there'll be those, ga those gatherings and that will... Um, I think there will be some lessons we'll take into that about how we do those. I don't think they will be the same as they were, but also we're going to think of ourselves increasing like a TV station um, filled with content. 
Um, and that content will have different audiences and different markets, if you want to put it into business speak, and we'll think, okay, what's the best thing now that can speak to a seeker? Um, what's the best thing that can speak to um, you know, someone who's wanting to go deeper with the Lord? How do we produce those things? Um, we like live. Um, I know a lot of people will do pre-records on Sunday, and that, that's great. We think that live and ropey is probably a little bit more engaging than pre-recorded and polished. Um, but that's a personal preference. I don't think it's backed by any research, but I think it creates a sense of event and a sense of occasion um, when people know. That, and, and we have a, a communication circle that we always try and produce. So, for example, some of you are leaving messages in chat now. If I, for example, um, mention Ian Rathbone, that's just said, we need to know um, the why of, of our church in buildings. If I just loop back, so I've provoked something, Ian has responded, and I've said it back to camera. Um, that makes him feel really involved and really included because there's a communication circle that's happened there. And we try and produce that in our services. So our online chat, we have multiple hosts every week looking over all the platforms, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the church online platforms. And they are sending to those of us in front of the camera summaries of messages that people are posting so that we can read those back and we can create that sense of event and sense of inclusion. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question really that well, um, Carl, but just to, just to say, I, I think there's three, uh, somebody recently, I, I, I did a, a seminar, I, 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 I sat in on a seminar that someone learned on social media the other day, and they were talking about three sorts of adverts that our churches should have. Um, one of them is an event ad. If you've not used Facebook ads um, evangelistically, then uh, you really need to start thinking about that. Um, it, it's where people are at. And if you have a problem with Facebook, um, you shouldn't allow your problem to stop your evangelistic effectiveness because there are people living there. Uh, there are people on that platform all the time. That's where some of our neighbors are sitting. Um, and you need to get over your, your dislike of Facebook and you need to start thinking about how you can by all means win some. And so I think paying for some sponsored ads um, is really important. We're increasing our budget for, we've been advertising on Facebook for years now, but we're increasing our budget. So an event ad, maybe run that 10 days before your event and promote it and encourage people to have a click through the, the always think when you put an advert, what's people's action point. And it might be that they could, you know, book a place or that, you know, they click here and they get a welcome message or here's the URL. But imagine if they're seeing it six days before the event, um, they're not going to remember that six days time. You know, maybe they can click through, submit their email and a reminder comes to them on Sunday morning that the service is about to start. Um, then, so there's an event ad, there's something called an evergreen ad. Um, this is something you can run all the time. So an evergreen ad might be me going to camera for 40 seconds and saying, Hey, my name is Mark Pugh. I'm the lead pastor of a church in Exeter called Rediscover Church. And we have a hope-filled message for you. We would love to help you on your journey of discovering whether God is real and whether there can be hope in today's world. Just a short ad like that. It just, it doesn't advertise an event. It just advertises a hope and it gets us presence. Um, and then there's a the third one, the evangelism ad. It might be apologetics. It might be you do a video that's really short and short's really important and says, you know, you might be wondering, where is God in the midst of all this pain and suffering with coronavirus? That's a really good question. And I'd love to debate that with you. I'd love to explore, is God real and does he care? And maybe do some apologetics, just short videos and put them out as, sp as sponsored ads. They're really in in incredible ways of just <laughs> trying to engage with people. Um, and I'll just say one more thing before I hand back. Um, if you buy a product of Amazon, or Argos, or wherever you choose to buy your products. Um, I wonder how many of you look at the reviews before you buy. Um, we, I, I usually look at the reviews of what other customers have said more than I look at the description of the product that the manufacturer said. People do that with our churches. So it doesn't matter what you say, what are other people saying? And it might be really interesting for you to Google your church as someone with that mindset and to find out what other people are saying about you. If no one is saying anything about you, then it's equivalent 
to buy in a product that no one's reviewed. Um, so getting reviews is really important um, and thinking through what do people find. It's what's in marketing terms called a push and pull culture. Um, we used to years ago push out, you know, this event's fantastic. This is amazing. You know, you'll enjoy this. And, but today we live in a pull culture. People are wanting to look themselves. They want it to be investigative. And online is where they do that. They won't look at your notice board in your church. They won't sort of ask if you can send them a leaflet in the post. They will look online. They'll Google you. They will um, find out what other people are saying. And if they're saying nothing, that will say everything. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Mark. And um, just some really thought-provoking stuff there. And I think lots of us will be just trying to think about how do we apply that in our context right now. And I can even just see that coming through from, from some of the questions and that are coming through now. What, what I wonder is, Sarah, would you be able to unmute yourself? Because you've been looking at some of the questions that have come in. Um, and perhaps um, just um, there'll be some themes in there. Why don't you just address them now to, to, to Mark and to David? And you've been looking at them and just begin to put some of those questions across for them to answer. And guys, just to get through as many as we can, so we've got about 10 minutes. Let's just keep our, our answers at sort of short and to the point if we, if we can on them so we can get through as many of them as, as we can do. But Sarah, go on, why don't you Great. begin to ask um, those? Oh, thanks, Carl. Um, so I think there's quite a lot of practical questions that are just coming through um, just to kind of sift through. You know, Mark, you were talking about um, reviews and I think someone was asking how do you get um, those reviews uh, on, on is it just a Facebook thing or is it usually across the platforms how do you get the reviews and um, do you want to yeah yeah it's a great question I just put that in the chat as well actually uh, J just ask your church just say hey would you uh, we, we uh, like you get a very small take up if you're honest um, you know you won't get all your congregation doing it but um, just say to your church, hey, listen, what you say about this community can be a matter of life or death for somebody. Um, would you just take a couple of minutes to go online and review the church? So that's one thing. Um, secondly, we also send a survey out to everybody who visits our church. And we have some beautiful things coming back to us. Um, and there's some phraseology that people can use that we can then you know, put on our website and put on our welcome literature and so on um, that just give other people's viewpoints of what they think about us. Um, you know, I, we have to make sure it's authentic. So, you know, don't, don't give your congregation the words to say, let it come from their hearts. And, and if they don't like you, then, you know, then that's a difficulty as well. If they give you one star, um, but just to ask them just just think that's a really important thing let's let's ask them to give those reviews to us thank you thanks that's really helpful and uh, yeah really thought provoking as well and um, i guess just another really practical one with the zoom outages obviously that was uh, this weekend uh, i know so came and right, right early on was just saying is there and you know dave you were saying you know make sure you've got a backup plan are there other similar zoom type platforms that can be used um or what what could people's backup plans look like um, uh dave or mark don't mind <laughs> um uh, the, like zoom is brilliant at what it does and it in the last two months it's got significantly better than it was two months ago even so there is um there's it is a market leader which you know is very um very significant but i think some of the backup plans facebook messenger has become significantly improved in the weeks uh, past weeks and so as a backup plan it won't have all the functionality but it could be really helpful as a backup plan if you've got i can't remember what numbers it comes with but i think it could cope with 50 pretty easily so if you that sort of size group um, we use something called StreamYard um, for our Sundays, which allows us basically to have 10 different locations that we are broadcasting from. And rather than someone sitting in a studio and mixing 10 cameras, someone sitting in their home with their computer and they on their computer are deciding which camera is on and which is off. Um, and we, that's a really good platform, but that's more of a broadcast. It doesn't, you obviously don't see the congregation, but you can have up to 10 participants taking part in the service. So we might have three different 
homes with worship leaders in. Um, we'll have different people, you know, responding to messages coming in. Um, someone else will be a preacher. So we'll have someone else praying. Um, and StreamYard is a really good system. We've been very impressed with it. That's great. Thank you. And I've seen a whole bunch of comments coming in from other platform recommendations in the chat. So check those out as well. Um, there's been a, a number of different questions around the whole um, thing around engaging people. So Mark, you were talking about using communion because it's quite an interactive uh, thing in, in our service. And I guess it's how do we, you know, on a Sunday in a church building, you, it's quite easy to kind of see people engaging or not. But it's when we're all online, then there's just a number of different um, questions coming in around how do we keep people engaged? How do we keep people uh, across the board kind of responsive? How do we um, help people who are new to church engage in church and all of that kind of spectrum of engagement? I think it'd be really helpful just if um, you guys could maybe just kind of unpack the whole topic around kind of engaging our congregations on a Sunday morning or online. Yeah, one of the things I've, I noticed, uh, Sarah, was that um, uh, Mandy and I are sitting together, and when it comes to worship, um, it's quite interesting, it's only me and her singing, really. It's a whole different, actually, how we help people to say, you, 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 you need to church on my own, never mind church on the way, it's a church on my own. You have to learn how to worship without being held up by the rest of the group. And I think whole pastoral, uh, intimacy with Jesus is really important to teach people. This is a time to to press and into that. It's quite it's quite different. I actually just sing. I mean, Mandy complains about me. My voice isn't great, really, but I just go for it, you know. And, and a couple of times I've really been caught up in it. I really have. And 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 uh, so I, I think I think that that's a realizing that actually when we're saying we're going to have about a time of worship, you're talking about one person on their own joining this this singing by themselves. Uh, and, and if you pick a song they don't know, they will not be joining in on it. Yeah, and, and it's always the same. Have new songs, have well-known songs for people to jo give something they can connect to and, 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 and get engagement because it's, it's not people just, are they engaging with what's happening? Tell them how to engage. See, just for a moment you might want, if you don't know the words, you just sit quiet and listen to this or, or tell Jesus anything you're worried about. I think points of engagement all the way through the service or through the time this is how you could if you want to you can do this and so you, you're inviting them and, and almost it's permission given as a, an entry gate into being involved in what's happening okay. yeah it's, it's it, it feels like a massive question i i we think that more than 50 percent of people watch our live stream on on a mobile device um which it's quite a different experience for someone who's got it on their 60 inch TV with the sound coming through their sound system and turned up loud. It's quite different when they got headphones in. they're probably not going to sing along with headphones. Mm. Um, so it, it does, you know, there's a variety of how people are receiving this. I, I, I think I'm coming to a position and, and you know, it's up for daily review to be honest, Sarah, but that posture and presence is more important than practice and, and trying to work on the posture of people's hearts and try to create moments of encounter with the Holy Spirit is more important than whether they sing or not. Um, mm. And so we, we're trying to make those the priorities, um, not, to, not to fall out whether people sing or not, like encourage people. And we often ask them to have a posture change, you know, maybe come on now, let's all kneel on the floor, as well, that's the only place you can kneel, isn't it? Let's all, let's all kneel down um, and just prepare our hearts. I think communion is another one of those moments we probably begin in the last three weeks to create a lot more space in our programs where we just have instrumentals with some slides on the screen with some. So we've got prophetic teams of people that pray and they got prophetic words and we put them on slides while a musician plays. And we just encourage people to invite the presence of the Lord to come into their lives. Um, and, and I think probably that sense of like presence and posture is probably more deliverable than getting someone um, who can't sing for toffee um, with their headphones in their mobile device 
uh, with their conscious uh, with them being self-conscious about their flatmates that live in you know in the next room yeah. um we, we we think that those are probably the bigger prizes we can go for and to always try and put meaning you know the reality is a lot of our church services they're a bit karaoke aren't they you know we're, we're playing arrangements some other bands around the world we're singing songs that half the time you know I, i'm thinking what have i just sung there um not it's bad but uh, you know, we, we, we're not praising him with understanding a lot. So let's go for the understanding. Let's get people to write lists down of reasons why they're thankful to God. Let's get them to make notes of the things that they're grateful to God for. And, and let's get their understanding and their hearts engaging with this more than their singing voices. That, that, I might be completely wrong, but that's what we're reflecting on at this moment in time. That's really helpful. Really helpful. And... Um, I know another thing that's sort of come up a few times in the chat in various different ways is around, um, you know, what have, has anyone got any recommendations for sermon series or, or topics in this time? And I know we as a church, um, we had we had a really good plan in place till Christmas and then kind of COVID kind of hit. We, we've ditched it and we've kind of rejigged everything to be more relevant. Um, to the season we're in and then someone else was asking about Pentecost Sunday coming up and have you got any recommendations around that just wondered if you've got any thoughts around you know how how do we create these moments that are uh, evangelistic we've got an opportunity right now and I you know I think we as churches have a have a voice to speak in into those kind of situations so just if you've got any thoughts around things to really that are are really current that we can be looking at and equally Pentecost Sunday is coming up in a couple of weeks and how we navigate that. Dave, did you want to, I know Dave, you were talking right early on about making sure um, it was very kind of engaging at the minute. Um, I'm one of the people, I think local pastors are better at this than me because you have to do your own program. You have to think about it. I, I, I think any excuse, anything that's publicised, any day it's publicised for you, you should take advantage of it. It's always, um, uh, and there is already, um, I think it'll be talked about when churches can get back together again. Pentecost is one of the times we hoped we'd be allowed to get together again. And so it's already out there in people's understanding. But I, I, I think you used it as, as this was a big day for, for people in the church, and you've never heard of it, but it's still a big, it could be a big day for you. And I, I think Mark would be better answering, and Carl would be honest, about what local church are planning than me on that one. I think for, for us, one of the things we, we've regularly tried to do is how, how do we create moments of encounter with explanation? So, so whether, whether it's, um, whether it's um, Pentecost Sunday or, or any other Sunday, and, and I think actually it's, Pentecost Sunday just gives us a real opportunity to dive into a really significant part of our story and our faith. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think, yeah, there's a great opportunity there to think creatively. I, I think our goal has to be with, because it depends on, again, on who, who our audience is. If you have a closed Zoom, you've got a very different audience to sub to a, perhaps if you're streaming something through StreamYard, because you then don't always know who, you're, who's, who it is that's watching. So I think for us, it's about how do we create moments of encounter with the explanation? And the explanation becomes really key part of it. How do we walk this through with people? So they do, it's like Mark said, how do we create the understanding for, for what it is that we're trying to lead, peop lead people into? Um, you know, I, I love there what, um, what somebody suggested around, was it Phil Hannam at Chelmsford was just suggesting that they put it out there for different people to submit a video to be part of a song. And I think people like seeing people they're, they're used to seeing. And so when, you know, one of the things we've tried to do is bring different um, guests onto the service from the church. And actually that gets as much attention as the preaching time or, or anything else. And uh, as good as a preacher as I may think I am, they actually, they, what they really enjoy is the moment when they get to see other people um, from, from, from the church. And, and so I think just creating those moments become really key um, on, on a Sunday. Mark, I don't know if you want to add to that, but that's some of the things that we were important to us. I'd love to pick anybody's brains on this, really. I'm sure there's some great concept people in the room. Um, we work 12 months ahead normally, and we just scrapped everything. And um, I, uh, we, we do our two services a bit different. Our first service, I've just, um, I just felt led to go and just pick up something biblical of looking at the life of David 
So I'm just doing a series on the life of David, which feels very um, disconnected from coronavirus, but there's so much in his life that just taps into so many of the issues and the themes. Um, and I think just let the Bible speak, really. Um, our second service, we're trying all sorts of different things. Um, it's a great opportunity to, to blood some people um, at preaching as well. So this coming Sunday, I've got three people doing um, three to four minute sermons um, and um, we'll string that together in, in the hour broadcast. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have any good answers. I don't think I'd love to hear what other people are finding is working. Brilliant. Our, um, our, our time has, has, has gone. And, um, and one of the things I just want to say is, you know, I think these times just to be able to ask questions are, are really important and really vital. And um, hopefully um, in, in whether you're located in the east of the region or the west of the region, through area pastors, there's, there's a regular opportunity to be able to connect together as, as church leaders, as pastors, create some space for you not just to, to pray and to speak into each other's lives but also to ask questions as well and so i really want to encourage you just to keep those connections going um our time has gone i'm going to just hand back to dave if there's just anything final that he wants to just say to to you all um before we perhaps just I mean, ask mark if you would pray for us before we close as well david okay i just closing sort of thoughts almost like announcements to sort of keep you up to date just remember uh, I had a, a little phrase about information hygiene really is really important that anything you say now, um, do not take for granted that everyone who listens to you is friendly, um, that people will be listening to find things to complain to about. I'm not trying to be paranoid, but like to say, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. And I think um, if you're going to quote things on a story, make sure it's true. Just doing it. And if it's not true, you will be found out very, very quickly. Conspiracy theories, all those things, keep, them, keep politics out of your video. Do not get party political. The only time you mention politics is to pray for your leaders. Don't use it for your own personal politics. Um, so it's a bit blunt to say that we have to do that. And, and oh, by the way, someone I noticed funeral service. I've taken a funeral service recently, and a few others have. Um, crematoriums are, are often doing live streams be aware that they usually go live 20 minutes before the service so if you're in there talking to the undertaker everybody hears everything you said so if you said oh this is going to be a rough funeral because they all hate each other everybody heard that everybody heard that so you want to be really really careful with what we say on, 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 on things like that really um that's really and also be patient everyone can just uh, we are being we're actually a bit more liberal on the anglicans they're like one vicar into a building we're seeing up to five people and so but we've got to be patient i mean we have to show good examples we have to be in, we're, we're not exceptions for examples the way we organize our buildings so be patient the nlt will are responsible for making that decision when buildings can be opened you're responsible for making sure that when that time comes you're ready to go for it so um just Let's be patient with one another. Bless you. Brilliant. Thanks, Dave. And uh, if we had time, I'd love to ask you more about that experience of that funeral. Um, but uh, time has gone. I have so many questions. I was okay. I was okay. That was good. <laughs> I like the person. Um, Mark, before we go, would you just would you just pray pray a blessing over us? That'd be great if you could if you could do that. That'd be great. Brilliant. Sure. That was just such a massive point of Dave, though, about being careful what you put online. Yeah. Um, just to give one example. We we. Um, we did a series on hot topics back in January before the lockdown and um, did a series on sexuality, human sexuality and flourishing. And, um, and I have absolutely no problem with anybody in the world listening to what we teach in because I believe it's the message of Jesus. Um, but we decided not to make that freely available online. People have to request to it and they have to sign a form, a disclaimer as to how they'll use that information. Um, and it's just so important. We have to be really wise in these days because once it's in public domain, people will take one line. It doesn't matter what you said. They can string sentences together and they can ruin your reputation. So just be mindful of that. Father, thank you that you're with us. Thank you that we're living in Pentecost now, that your spirit is looking for leaders that will have hearts open to you to be your voice piece into this nation. And Father, I pray that as we've navigated so much of our how in the past few months, 
but I pray that we will have a real crystal clear understanding of our why. And I pray that our how will always be surrendered and flexible to you. We all lay aside our personal preferences and we'll just by all means win some. We'll by all means love people. We'll by all means give you praise and glory. But Lord, I pray that you will empower us so that we're doing it in your strength and not in our own. May your blessings be upon each person here. May each of us be renewed and refreshed and revived, we pray. May our homes be renewed, refreshed and revived. Lord, I pray stresses in families, Lord, that there will be a renewal that just comes and our batteries will be fully charged. And Lord, we pray our congregations who have shown so much flexibility in the last few months. Lord, we pray that you will captivate their hearts and revive them for the days that are ahead, we pray. Bless each of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.